as you are aware, this month we have been talking about being wise. That's been the focus of the sermon series all through this month. Uh, first week we saw that wise is as wise does. If you know what to do and don't do it, that's not wise. It's not wise at all. The next week we saw that there are people who are wise the wrong way. They're wise in the ways of the world, but not wise God's way, not doing things God's way, and that's not so good. Last week we talked about a wise builder and a foolish builder. Both of them heard what the Lord said. The wise man, he, he built, he, he acted on what he heard, uh, and so Jesus said, that's, that's like the wise builder, the one who hears my word and acts on it. This week, well, this week we're going to talk about being wise, and we're going to find out that it's time to be wise. It's time to be wise now. It's time to be wise now. Before we go to Scripture and before we go to God's Word, let's, let's go to the Lord one more time in prayer. Father, thank you for your truth. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for teaching us and giving us, giving us your truth. Help us, Lord, to be ones who hear and act on what we hear. Help us to be like the wise builder. Help us to be wise in your ways, not just the ways of the world. And help us, Father, to understand that we're only wise. Well, wise is as wise does. So help us to be wise enough to do what you ask us to do. Teach us, speak to us, help us listen for your voice, through your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to focus especially on Ephesians chapter 5, especially verses 15 and 16. Now, we're going to pick up a few verses on either side and a couple of other verses too, but our focus is going to be on Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. If you have your Bible, I encourage you to look in your Bible, and you may even want to underline some verses, some things that God says in these verses. So what does Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 say? It says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. In Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, God gives a warning, he gives a command, and he gives a reason for the command, tells us why it's important. So verse 15 really starts with, with the command, and it says we need to be careful. He says, be careful how you walk. It's a command from God. Be careful how you walk. Now, God says we need to be careful. We need to take care. We need to pay attention. We need to watch what we're doing. We need to be sure that we're walking in the way that he intends, going where he asks us to go. Of course, when God says that, he's not talking about an afternoon stroll or a little bit of exercise, uh, taking a walk for exercise. When the Bible talks about our walk, it's talking about the way that we live. It's talking about our life. So when it says walk in a way that's pleasing to God, it means to live in a way that's pleasing to God. God is very, very much concerned with how we walk, with how we live. If you're interested in that, earlier in chapter 5, he talks about it some. Look back up if you have your Bible open to Ephesians 5, verse 8, 9, and 10. It says, you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, walk as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. I love what it says in those verses, Ephesians 5, 8 through 10. Notice what it says about the way that we ought to walk, the way that we ought to go. We're to walk in the light, we're to walk as children of the light, we're to walk in goodness and righteousness and truth and we're to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Why do you suppose we're supposed to learn what is pleasing to the Lord? Probably so we can do it. We're supposed to learn what's pleasing to the Lord so that we can walk in His way so as to please Him. And what is it that pleases God? Pay special attention to verse 9. He says, when you walk in goodness, when you walk in righteousness, when you walk in truth, that is especially pleasing to the Lord. I can promise you that if you walk in goodness, if you're, if you're living good, good in God's eyes and righteously, and if it's truth that you follow, then you're going to walk in a way that pleases the Lord in a manner pleasing to the Lord. So 
Ephesians 5.15 then commands us to be careful how we walk. We're supposed to walk in a way that pleases God. We're supposed to live in a way that pleases God. So be careful how you live. Be careful to live in the right way. Okay, well, in verse 15 then, what comes next? He says, be careful how you walk. And he says, not as unwise, but as wise. Not as unwise people, but be wise in how you walk. God wants us to walk wisely. He doesn't just want us to to traipse along and say that we're doing things in His will. He wants us to walk wisely. Oh, we need to be careful to walk wisely with the Lord. But the question comes in, how do we do that? How do we walk wisely with the Lord? How are we going to do that? Well, I see the answer, at least the big part of the answer in verse 16. In verse, he says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of your time. That's important, making the most of your time. We walk wisely by making wise use of the time that we have, making wise use of our time. You know, as I think about making wise use of our time, there are really two key aspects, two key things about making wise use of our time. One is a positive statement, and one is in terms of the negative. What are they? Well, first of all, we need wise time management, and secondly, we need to not waste time. Those, those are two parts of the, the same uh, way of doing things God's way and being wise about the time that we have, wise time management and not wasting the time that we have. So what about the first one then, wise time management? How do we do that? You got to plan wisely. You have to plan if it's going to come out. You got to plan wisely. We plan to do things according to God's way. We plan to follow His plan, His desires, His will for us. We set goals and we have scheduled times to accomplish the things that He wants us to do. We plan to do it God's way, plan wisely. Benjamin Franklin said that those who fail to plan, plan to fail. That's wise. Those who fail to plan, plan to fail. If you want to do things God's way, you got to plan to do it God's way. If you just say, well, I'll I'll just go along and see what happens, I can promise you it won't work. If you don't plan to do things God's way, Satan will be certain to arrange your schedule to make sure you don't get around to doing God's will and he'll smile and laugh all the time that he does it. So how do we do things God's way? How do we know God's will? Well, remember what it said in verse 9. Good advice, plan to walk in goodness, plan to walk in righteousness, plan to walk in truth. Find ways to do that, and you're going to come out okay. I notice after our verses 15 and 16, verse 17, the verse immediately following our focal verses says, So then do not be foolish. Don't be a fool, but understand what the will of the Lord is. If you don't want to be foolish, if you don't want to be a fool in God's eyes, then understand God's will. And why do we understand God's will? Understand His will? Then do it. If we know what to do and don't do it, the Bible says that's sin. It is unwise to know God's will and not to do it. The foolish builder heard what God said but chose not to act on it. That's not who we want to be. It seems that the fool neither understands God's will or either doesn't understand God's will or just doesn't do it, even if he understands it. By contrast, the wise study and learn so they can understand God's will. And when they understand God's will, then they get busy doing what God wants. That's by definition what it is to be wise with the Lord, to be wise in God's way. And, you know, I said there are two parts to walking wisely. The first is time management. The second is not wasting time. So if you don't want to waste time, how are you going to accomplish that? Same answer, you plan wisely. You plan to what to do so that you don't just waste time. You know, when I was looking at what it says here in Scripture and thinking about wasting time, not using time wisely, I I did some research to try and find out what some of the time wasters are. So what are the time wasters that keep you from doing God's will? What are the things that that you waste time with not doing God's will? 
Now, some of the research I, I did pointed to some of the big culprits in American life that keep us from doing things well and, and cause us to waste time, not necessarily for God's will. The, these are just general concepts, but I, I think it fits well for us in this context. Number one on all the lists, social media. People spend time, uh, Americans spend hours and hours every day on social media, time that can never be recovered. Frequently, it's over silly stuff that doesn't really even matter, but it eats up our time. It devours our time. Not so wise, social media. They all say that's one of the big ones. I list another one. Another culprit is TV. Well, yeah, but I like my TV shows. Yeah, whether it's reality shows or soaps or movies or sports or news, Americans spend hours and hours in front of the TV, most of it accomplishing little or nothing. It steals what time we could have had to be productive for God and for God's work. So the TV, it can be a time waster. Well, that's not all. There are lots of other ways that we waste time. A lot of people waste time playing video games. Uh, I, I think that this thing going with us, carrying it with us, is one of the worst things that's ever happened to us as Americans. We waste time. We use time um, in lots of ways. And another thing, distractions. Uh, one of the reasons we waste time is because we don't stay on task. We keep, we keep letting little things interrupt so that we don't get the things done that we need to get done. Another one, procrastination. Procrastination, I'll do it tomorrow. You know the old saying, why do today what you can leave until tomorrow? Uh, that wastes time, gets nothing done. One that was almost on every list that I saw was worry. Worry. Interestingly enough, uh, lots of people spend countless hours worrying, fearing what might happen, and in the process, they do nothing to help the situation. Worry steals time from us and steals time from God. Another one that was on almost all the list that really surprised me was gossip. Uh, I was surprised to see that on secular lists, gossip. Um, most of the research mentioned it, and, and they say that people get so busy telling everybody else's business that they don't get around to doing what they're supposed to do. I was surprised to see it. They say it's especially bad in workplaces, and it steals work from the employer who has hired you. There are other things. For instance, disorganization. People spend hours and hours and hours searching for things and chasing items down that they should have known where they were in the first place because they aren't very well organized. Mary, thank you for being well organized. Uh, <clears throat> she helps me out and she tells me, all right, get in there and get to work. So she organizes me. But it helps to be organized and to know where things are. And then one that almost all of them said and it's sort of one that takes the cake is a lack of motivation. Now, some people would just call it laziness. But they say, oh, I'm, I'm just not motivated. I just don't feel like doing it, so I don't get around to doing it. Instead, I waste time. I piddle away the hours doing little or nothing probably going back to TV or to social media or something else. Lack of motivation. Do you know on average how much time they say Americans spend wasting every day? I wonder how much time you spend wasting, wasting time in your day. They say on an average we waste two hours a day. That's 624 hours a year. That's 26 days a year. That's almost a whole month wasted on average every year. Wow, that's a lot of time wasted. Remember what God told us. He said that we need to be careful how we walk. We need to make the most of our time. Think of the time that we could be using that we aren't using like we could. What if, what if every Christian used those two wasted hours a day for the Lord? What if every Christian used those two wasted hours instead used them for the Lord? What if every Christian used those wasted hours to witness? Well, if we did, there'd be a whole lot more people on the pews, a whole lot more people getting saved, and a whole lot more people getting yanked out of an eternity in hell if we would spend two hours a day witnessing to those who are lost. Or what if every Christian used those two hours a day instead of wasting them, used them in Bible study? Well, if we did that, then a lot more Christians would know God's will, and hopefully they'd start doing it more 
if we really knew what God wanted. Uh, we're told that the Americans are more biblically illiterate, even Christians are more biblically illiterate now than we've ever been in all of American history. Interesting. We don't know the word. Even those who attend church regularly don't know the word like we should. Well, what if every Christian used those wasted hours to pray? What if we use those hours to pray instead of just twiddling our thumbs and wasting the day? Well, then we would be a lot closer to God and people who need intercession, people who need prayer would be prayed up. We'd probably get busy witnessing to some of those people that we're praying for. And God would use it to change them. Oh, what if every Christian used those wasted hours to worship? Not just to listen to Christian songs. It, it's more than that. Use those hours in contrition, uh, repenting of our sin, and use them to, to glorify God, to bring glory to God in our life, in our living, in our walk. What if every Christian used those two hours for God instead of wasting them? Make it personal. What if you spent those two hours a day in the Word and praying and witnessing and worshiping? What if you were doing that instead of wasting the time? Well, how would God change your day if you spent two hours in, in prayer and worship and, and in the Word and, and in witnessing? How would God change your week or your year, or your life? And how would God change the lives of people around you? How would he change your world and your family and your friends if you spent your time two hours extra every day on Jesus and his will? It changed the people around you, drawing them to Christ, changing eternity if we would give those two hours to God instead of wasting them. Ephesians 5, 17 says, so then don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand his will and do it. Understand it and do it. You see, walking wisely requires good time management. It requires that we don't waste the time that we have. It requires that we do those things. That's what it takes to walk wisely with the Lord. So Ephesians 5, 15, and 16 gives us a warning, and it gives us a command, and it gives us a method, not wasting the days. But more than that, it also tells us why. Why do we need to do that? Because the days are evil. Now, are these days evil? Are the days around us evil? Hmm, I sort of think so. You know, I heard this week about a woman in California who fatally stabbed her boyfriend, stabbed him 108 times with three different knives and killed him. She was sentenced this week to 100 hours of community service and two years of probation. Really? She murdered someone, killed him 108 times. She doesn't even get 108 hours of community service, just 100 hours of community service or murder. Sounds to me that, uh, I, and yes, I understand she was, they were doing marijuana bongs and she had a psych, psychotic episode and she said that's why she did it. She stabbed herself too, but she killed somebody. She murdered somebody and she gets community service. I think that what she did was evil, but I think the way the justice system was working is evil as well. And it's not a big surprise that we see it. About a month or so ago, I heard about a, a man in New York who was released on bail, I think he didn't even have to pay bail actually, uh, for murder charges, and the next day he killed someone else. Folks, that's evil and it's wrong. Our world is full of evil. Earlier uh, in this school year, a six-year-old boy shot his, in Virginia, shot his first grade teacher with his mother's gun. His mother was actually sentenced uh, this last week uh, because of her part in this evil uh, in in the the shooting, uh, she got and she was one of the first parents to be held partly responsible for for the shooting. Every week we hear about flash mob robberies in major cities and stores closing. There, there are consequences. They're closing everywhere. I, I saw this week that community activists are are demanding that those stores stay open because those are in communities that have high need. Well, yeah, but high crime comes with its consequences. Our world is full of evil. 
When it comes to politics, Democrats are accusing Trump of inciting insurrection and Republicans are accusing Biden of taking bribes from our enemies. Our nation more than ever before seems to be divided and, and evil seems to be having its way. There are boys in girls' locker rooms and there are biological men who are taking home the trophies, walking away with the big wins in women's sports. And, and that seems wrong as well. It's never ending. And the list could go on and on. There's abortion, and there are mass shootings, and violence, and anti-Semitism. There are hate crimes, and racism, and, and drive-by shootings. There are all kinds of things going on in our world, and yes, I would say it, these days are evil. We are surrounded by evil in our days. So what does God tell us? He says, you need to be careful how you walk. You need to be careful how you live uh, and you need to be wise, not unwise. You need to make the most of your time because these days are evil. You know what? It really shouldn't surprise us. Remember what we see in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It warns us about evil in the last days. It says, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come for men will be boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. And it says, avoid such men as these. Folks, these things are all around us every day. We see all of those things every day. Yes, we are living in evil days and and maybe according to 2 Timothy, even in the last days, in the end times, it's getting bad around us. I'm reminded also of Isaiah 5.20. It says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. You know, things that we knew were wrong 20 years ago are now celebrated uh, in the mainstream today. Considered good things when God says that they're sin. In fact, people who stand up for traditional values or moral behavior today are called bigots and haters. People who say, I believe what God says is true and I'm following it. Bigots, haters. Good is called evil. Evil is called good. Folks, we're living an evil day. So no wonder God tells us we need to be careful how we walk. We need to be wise because the days are evil. If you're still in Ephesians 5, back up one verse to Ephesians 5, verse 14. It says, for this reason, it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Pretty strong word. Awake, sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. God says, awake, sleeper. That says to me that it's time to get moving. Uh, the alarm's going off. God's giving us an alarm, and he's saying, get moving. Get moving, not yesterday, uh, or not tomorrow, not next week, not next year. Get moving now. Now is the time to get moving and get doing. Time is running out. Time is getting short. So get up, get moving, and, and do it now is what God says. And don't miss out what he said in the middle of that verse. He said, awake sleeper, arise from the dead. Arise from the dead. In God's eyes, it looks like too many church folks are, are just dead. They're not walking and living in faith. And if you're not living in faith, then you must be dead. So God is trying to raise the dead. He's trying to get us moving and going. And sometimes I think that he's not having much success. You know, James talks about that. He said, faith without works is dead. Ephesians echoes that thought, says it too, that if we're not living in faith, then we're, we're dead in faith. God is calling us. He's ringing the alarm clock. He's saying, wake up, awake sleeper. Rise, arise from the dead. You're acting like you're dead. You're not moving and walking in faith for me. If you're not living for Christ, you must be dead. And God says, wake up. He's trying to wake the dead. Is he trying to wake you? He says, wake the dead. And verse 17 says, don't be foolish, 
Understand God's will and do it. Don't just say, I'll do it tomorrow. Do it now, because time is running out. The days are evil. We need to do it now. So what is it that we need to do? Well, we need to know God's will and do it now. How do we know God's will? We get into His Word. We pay attention to what He says. We pour out our hearts to Him, and we say, Yes, Lord, whatever you tell me, that's what I'm going to do. We don't say, God, tell me what you want, and I'll see if I'm interested. We say, God, yes, whatever you say, I'm going to do. Then you get into His Word. You listen to what He says. If He says it, then plan on doing it. Make plans to follow and do things God's way. Know God's will and do it. Do it now. Be wise. Not, not sometime down the road. Not when, when you get old and have nothing else to do. Don't wait. Be wise. Get up and get going. Get doing. Do God's will. Be wise now. How do we do that? Remember what he said. Walk in goodness. Walk in righteousness. Walk in truth. If you're doing that and planning to do that day after day, then you will be wise. And it doesn't have to wait till tomorrow. You can do that now. In faith, what's the first thing we do to start walking wisely? Well, we commit our lives to Christ. He's the one who died on the cross for our sins. He rose again to give us life. And when we commit our lives to him, he says he'll save us. He'll change us. He'll give us new life. That's where it begins. If you have not yet given your life to Christ to belong to Him, if you're not yet born again in Christ, if you're just going through the motions, just attending church, just doing the religious thing, but not having a personal relationship with Christ, that's not wise. Time is running out. We don't know whether we'll have tomorrow or not. It's time to be wise and to walk with Jesus. If you have given your life to Jesus, then are you walking wisely? Are you doing what God asked you to do? Christian, is God asking you to get some things right with him? Maybe to make a fresh commitment. Maybe to say, you know what? God has told me some things he wants me to do. I'm going to do it. Maybe it's to join with this church, with the other people in this, this church body and say, I, I'm, I, I'm going to work for Christ. I'm going I'm to make my commitment to work for Christ with this bunch of folks because that's what God is calling me to do. Maybe it's to say, you know, I'm letting too many other things get in the way so that I'm not walking with God the way I should, not as close as I should be. Whether it's social media or TV or worry or whatever it happens to be. Friend, if God is talking to you and if you need to get some things right with Him, now is the time. Be wise. Now. Will you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for your truth. Thank you for these words that you give to us both of, of warning and of, of instruction on where we need to be and how we need to, to go here in Ephesians. Help us, Father, to walk wisely. I pray that if there's even one who needs to commit their life to you and become a Christian today, that they wouldn't wait, but today would be the day. And Father, for Christians who need to make a, a fresh step of faith, take a, a step for you in obedience and in faithfulness, Lord, may this be the day. Help us, Father, to be wise, and not to wait until tomorrow, but to be wise now. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go, as our song of invitation and response. And if He's leading, then I certainly hope that our answer will be, Yes, I'll go, I'll go, 